Lisa and the Kickers Project, investigating climate change and remote sensing, present The Carbon Cycle with your host, William Tom Green. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Green. I am a teacher teaching with technology, T3 national instructor. I also work for the Monroe County ISD and Monroe Public Schools. Today we're going to show you a series of activities that are related in a carbon cycle and climate change unit. Uh, this unit was developed under a NASA climate change grant awarded to Wayne Risa and Eastern Michigan University. The activities uh, are basically uh, emphasizing the use of sensors and handheld technologies, which we will show. Though a few of the activities in the unit um, only have as a small piece of sensors, we will talk you through each one of these individually. But the first thing I would like to um, show is the handheld devices that we'll be using. The first is a Texas Instrument TI-84 Plus Silver Edition Graphing Calculator. Now this will interface with either the Vernier Lab Pro or the Texas Instrument CBL2. And I'm going to show you how to put these devices together. Through these interfaces, and we're going to use the Lab Pro today, um, we're going to show how the sensors um, hook in and also the easy data app that actually runs the sensors. When you purchase the Lab Pro or CBL2, it'll have a sled. So the first thing you do is you snap the 84 plus into the sled. Then you take the Lab Pro or CBL2, and then there's a rail, and you just slide that on. And now it's hooked together as one device. Then you will take an I.O. cable, and it will hook the I.O. port of the 84 plus to the I.O. port of the Lab Pro. You always got to make sure those are nice and firmly attached, or you'll get an error message that it says the graphing calculator does not see the uh, Lab Pro. Then, if you're using only one sensor, this is a temperature probe, this is a temperature probe. We're going to hook that into channel one of the Lab Pro. And you always go with the lowest number channel first. And if you're going to, which we will in a few minutes, hook a second sensor, you will then put that into channel two. And then channel three if you have a third sensor. So this is how you end up hooking the entire device together. This unit, the Carbon Cycle and Climate Change, is found on resa.net forward slash climate change, and you would click on the Carbon Cycle in the left-hand column, and everything that you see, uh, the six activities that we're going to be doing, uh, will be on that, and also the video clips for each activity. So what we'd like to do right now is just to give you a very uh, brief overview of the Easy Data application. Now we're going to refer to the column that I'm pointing to here, right under the LCD screen, as your soft keys. The ones here on the main face of the calculator, where we're going to refer to a row column designation. For example, the apps, APPS button, I would refer to as the third row, second column. So we're going to press the apps button, and it's going to give you all the different applications that are on the calculator. These applications extend the power of the calculator, just sort of the software that you would find on a Windows computer or a Macintosh extends that too. So I'm going to go down to Easy Data. And I am now going to press the last row, last column, the Enter key, which will bring it up. And it will put you into the Easy Data Interface application. All the sensors, the newest sensors from the last couple of years, uh, all have an Auto ID chip in the sensor. And it allows Easy Data to be able to know what is being plugged in, if everything's working right. And in this case, it is. Now you can see that since I have a temperature probe, it is giving us temperature in Celsius. So I am now going to use a soft key. 
the window soft key, which will then allow me to bring down the menu for setup. So by pressing that, it gives me a contextual menu. And it does tell me in channel one is the temperature probe. Now, if I press enter on the temperature probe, it allows me, if I want to, you'll notice that there is a unit. I can go from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Kelvin if I like. Since this is a science um, uh, number of activities, we're going to keep it in Celsius. But I, just for the demonstration, I will go to Fahrenheit for a second. I will press OK, which will bring me back. And I will refer this to the home screen of um, Easy Data. But we are now going to go back and get out of Fahrenheit. So again, set up. We are doing something with the temperature probe, so all we have to do is press enter. Again, units, Celsius. And Celsius is a default, and then I'm going to go back to OK. Now, if you notice, each, whatever you put in channel one, whatever sensor, the default settings are what you'll see. You'll notice where it says mode, time graph. That's a sampling mode. We have the ability, again, I'm going into setup. A lot of the stuff that you would do is in setup, which gives you the flexibility. I want to change the type of sampling time graph that I'm going to do. But while you're seeing all the different options in setup, I want it this, that you have a number of sampling options, a time graph, which basically you can tell it how often, however many seconds you want something to take a reading and for how long. Events with entry which would be something like Boyle's Law, if you're looking and comparing uh, pressure um, versus temperature, uh, you would then have to, or volume, you would then have to enter something. You would do and get a reading, and then you would manually enter it. That's events with entry. Single point, which is another one we're going to use, will take 10 seconds of readings and give you an average. So if you're doing water quality data, and that kind of thing, or you just want one reading, it averages the readings over 10 seconds. But I'm going to go down to, and most of the activities will be using time graph. So I'm going to go there, and I'm going to change the time graph in our first um, experiment. And I'm going to go into edit. So instead of taking a reading every second, let's take it every half a second, 0.5. And let's do, I don't know, 20. Let's do 20 readings. So I'm going to put 20. So this experiment will go for 10 seconds. Then I would go to Next. Everything looks fine. If it didn't, I would go into Edit again and just make the changes. What's very nice about using this kind of technology is that if you make a mistake, it's very easily corrected. So I'm going to go OK. Now, what I'm going to do is just a simple activity and it's uh, putting the temperature probe in the palm of my hand and let it take 10 seconds worth of data. This is a demonstration. Okay? When I'm ready to go, I press the start, the soft key under start, which is zoom. So I'm going to put it in the palm of my hand and I'm going to press start. It says the select function will overwrite the latest run. So if you've had other runs, it allows you to either save that last run or overwrite it. So we're going to overwrite it. Now, what you start to see is our data every half second. It's going across the screen. Now, what happens when it's done is it will fit the window around the data. So it will look like it's exaggerating it. And this is um, just an example of how easy that is. Now, you have the ability to either make use of the data that you've just got on a handheld for whatever activity you're doing, or it can be dumped into Excel or Logger Pro um, or other graphing programs. You have the ability to do that. Now, I want to show one other thing. I'm going to go to main. Now I'm back on the home screen. That data has not been lost. It is in there and it resides. And in fact, I think right now I will show you where this stuff resides at. If I quit out of easy data, it tells me now time is in list one. And in list two is the actual temperature. So I'm going to go OK. And you can often 
just dump that into your calculator. But if you want to look at it, you go to the second row, third column, the stat button, in the edit, and you press enter, and indeed you see the data, it's just like a spreadsheet, that was dumped into these lists. And this data then can be utilized for whatever you would like to. One last thing in this introductory activity I would like to show, so I'm going to go back to the third row, second column, the apps column, and I'm going to go back into easy data. Is I'm going to plug in a second sensor. And in this case, it will be, because it's handy right now, the carbon dioxide sensor. And it's going to go into channel two. Now, what ends up coming up on the screen is saying, yes, we now detect that there is a new sensor. Do we want to delete all data and detect the sensors, which you would say new, or do you want to add this new sensor and retain the current setup and data? Okay, well, we have not completely, we still have our temperature program there, so I'm just going to add. But if you said new, it would give you both it's the same thing. So I'm going to add that sensor. And now you see that there is a CO2 sensor and a temperature sensor. Well, this was my introduction to um, the uh, graphing calculator, the TI-84+, plus, easy data in the Lab Pro slash CBL2. Thank you. Funding for the Icarus Project is provided through a grant from NASA. Investigating climate change and remote sensing is a collaborative project of Wayne Risa, NASA, and the Institute for Geospatial Research and Education at Eastern Michigan University.